Elementary Mathematics Academy TDS Manager. And welcome to Doing the Math at Home. Today's focus for learning today is going to be on dividing whole numbers by a unit fraction or dividing a unit fraction by a whole number. So that is what we're going to focus on today is dividing whole numbers by unit fractions or unit fractions by whole numbers. But before we begin, I wanna make sure you have everything you need for today's learning. So let's talk about the materials we will need today. You will need something to write on and something to write with. Something to write on can be anything like some paper or you can get your notebook and something to write with can be anything from, you can have pencils, you can use a pen, or you can use markers if you have markers, or you can have, if you have this, dry erase marker and a dry erase board. So go ahead and get your materials for today's learning and let's get started to learn about dividing whole numbers by unit fractions and unit fractions by whole numbers. Before we start our activity for today and actually get into our lesson about dividing a whole number by a unit fraction or dividing a unit fraction by a whole number, let's start with the quick review. Let's see what we remember about dividing whole numbers and unit fractions and unit fractions and whole numbers. So we're gonna do this activity called Always, Sometimes, Never. And basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna read a statement and as I read the statement, we're gonna think about it. And as we're thinking, we're gonna think about, is that an always statement? Meaning, does that always happen? Is it a sometimes statement? Meaning that it happens sometimes, depending on what it is. Or is it a never statement? It's never gonna do that, ever. So. Let's go ahead and jump into our statements. And remember, always, sometimes, never. Let's read the first one. When a whole number greater than zero is divided by a unit fraction less than one, then the quotient is less than the whole number. Hmm, let's think about it. A whole number greater than zero is divided by a unit fraction less than one, then the quotient is less than the whole number. I'm gonna say sometimes. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, let's go with sometimes. So let's read the second one. When a unit fraction is divided by a whole number greater than zero, then the quotient is less than the unit fraction. Hmm. When a unit fraction is divided by a whole number greater than zero, okay, then the quotient is less than the unit fraction. Is that an always, sometimes, or never? sometimes here as well. Let's look at the last one. When a unit fraction less than one is divided by a whole number greater than one, then the quotient is less than the unit fraction. Hmm. When a unit fraction less than one is divided by a whole number greater than one, then the quotient is less than a unit fraction. I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna say always. That's always gonna happen no matter what. That's gonna be always. Now, I hope that you were able to get this information as well. I know it's a lot to write, so instead of writing it, if you have a, um, a camera phone, take a picture of it real quick. 
And if not, don't worry about it. We're gonna come back to it after we do our learning lesson. And we're gonna see which one of those statements on the board did we get correct? Did we get them all correct? And if so, we're gonna see if we wanna move anything around. So now that we have jumped into a quick review, let's get ready to dive into our lesson. So make sure you have your paper ready and your pencils are sharpened because we're about to start our lesson. So now that we just finished our review on dividing whole numbers by unit fractions or unit fractions by whole numbers, we're ready to now dive into our learning for today. Marco has nine liters of sports drink to share with the members of his soccer league. Marco gives each player a serving of one third liter of sports drink. To how many members of Marco's soccer league Will Marco give a serving of sports drink? Hmm. So let's dive into this math story, but we're gonna use our reading strategies to help us. So remember that first read is always just picturing the story. And I hope that's what you did because I did the same thing. And so as I read through the story, I pictured Marco. So here's Marco, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it over here. Here's Marco, stick person, Marco. Give him some eyes and a smile. Here's Marco, but he has this nine liters of sports drink. So I'm picturing something huge. And if you notice, it's bigger than Marco. So this is my sports drink. And I'm gonna put sports drink here. And I'm gonna put nine liters. That's a lot of sports drink. And he wanna share with some soccer people. So his, his soccer league. So I'm gonna put some more little people over here. They're not gonna have faces. We just know that it's some people over here that's their soccer league. And so now we're trying to figure out how many of those people are gonna get some of this drink. Hmm, that's what we're trying to figure out. That's what I pictured. So that's our step one. So our step two is to go analyze the question. Let's read this question again. Marco's soccer, to how many members of Marco's soccer league will Marco give a serving of sports drink? Hmm, the question is about how many members? And we wanna know how much of the drink they're gonna get. So if I wanted to rewrite that question, but make it an answer statement, I will say something like, Marco will serve blank members. Blank meaning the amount of members. So I'm gonna put that as my sentence down. Marco will serve blank members. So now we have our sentence down, I have my picture. Now I'm ready to pull out my important information. So I'm gonna go back into my story. So Marco has nine liters of sports drink. So what I know is that there's nine liters of drink. And I know that he wants to share it and one thirds. So he wants to share into one thirds. So how many members of Marco's team is gonna get? So this is what I know. What I don't know is how many people are gonna actually get some drink. I want to divide it into 
one third servings. Hmm. And that's going to tell me how many people are going to get my actual serving. So let's go into our picture. Actually, let's go into solving. So the one way I can solve it is, this is nine liters. Let me just draw that out, but this time instead of drawing it like an actual sports drink, I'm gonna draw it using rectangles. And this time, I'm gonna draw nine because I wanna represent each liter. So, here's one liter. Two liters, three liters, four liters, five liters, six liters, seven liters, eight liters, nine liters. So I'm gonna label it one liter, one liter, one liter, this is one liter, one liter, one liter, one liter, one liter and one liter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I was to take each of those liters and put them together, that will equal my nine liters. But what am I doing to each of those liters? I'm sharing them into thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and partition each of my liters into thirds. And to do that, that means I need to partition each liter into three equal parts. So now that I have partitioned them into three equal parts, one player, another player, each of these represent a different member or a different player. So let's see how many players can actually get some soft drink. I'm going to go ahead and number the inside of them so we can see how many gets it. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So we know that 27 members will be able to get some of this soft drink. So 9 divided by 1 third is actually 27. Now one thing I know before I go back to put my answer statement in. I look at the pattern of my picture and I notice that there's three pieces, there's three pieces. Each of these have a total of three pieces. And, and because I know there's a total of nine of them, I can easily say that this nine will, is like repeated addition. Three plus three plus three plus three. Repeated addition is the same as multiplication. So I know I can say there's nine, and it's three of each one, I could just say nine times three. And nine times three is 27. So I see a pattern when it comes to dividing you by unit fractions. I can just see that it's going to actually be the inverse operation. So I'm actually multiplying by the inverse, oper I'm actually multiplying by the reciprocal, which is the inverse operation. Before I go into putting the answer on my answer, my sentence down, let's talk about a pattern we see. One thing I notice is that if I look at each of my leaders, they're each partitioned into three parts. 
So that's three, that's three, that's three, that's three. And if you notice, all I'm doing is I'm doing repeated addition. And another thing I know about repeated addition is that repeated addition is the same as multiplication. So I can add three each time until I add it nine times, or I can multiply three times nine. And what I do notice is that three times nine is the same as 27. And what I notice is that nine divided by one third is the same as 27. Hmm. Something to think about. Making sure that you use your understanding of multiplication and division to help you understand that you can use it in all situations possible. So in this case, I divided each leader into thirds. And once I divided each leader into thirds, I could have used multiplication to determine how many total thirds there were. Or I could just count the pieces like I did. So let's go ahead and go back to our answer statement. Marco will serve 27 members. Now that we have finished with our learning activity, what we discovered was that our whole number, which was nine, greater than one and greater than zero, was divided by a unit fraction that our quotient was larger than our whole number. So what I wanted us to do was I wanted us to come back to our review because I wanted us to see, are our check marks in the right spot? Do we need to move anything? And I'm sitting down because I have this paper here because some of the problems we didn't discover. And so what we're gonna do is right now, go through and try to discover, well, is that a true statement? Is it an always, is it a sometimes, or is it a never? So let's start with our first one. The first one says, when a whole number greater than zero is divided by a unit fraction less than one, then the quotient is less than the whole number. Hmm, that was our learning activity today. The whole number was greater than zero because it was nine. And we divided by a unit fraction, which was one third. But our quotient was 27, which means that our quotient was actually greater than the whole number and not less than. And it looks like based off of what we discovered is that it's always taking each of the units and partitioning it, making more units. So that means what? This will always, this sometimes check is going to turn into a never check. So let's move that. I'm going to take our sometimes check and place it now into never. Good job. But now let's look at our next one. When a unit fraction is divided by a whole number greater than zero, then the quotient is less than the unit fraction. Hmm. We didn't practice that, but let's practice it now. It says when we have a unit fraction, and let's take the unit fraction one half. And it is divided by a whole number greater than zero. So I am going to divide it by, let's say, let's say our whole number is greater than zero. Let's just use the number one. One is greater than zero. And they're saying that the quotient is going to be less than the unit fraction. So we're looking for something less than one half. Y'all ready? So let's talk about what does this look like? First thing I want to do is I need to start off with my, my picture. So I'm going to start off with one half. So here's my picture. I'm going to partition it into halves. So we only want to talk about this half here. So I'm going to put some lines here. That's the half we want to talk about. And what I want to do is I want to take this one half and I want to divide it by one. That means I want to partition it into one. It's already one. So if it's already one, that means one half 
divided by one is equal to one half. Is that one half less than one half? No, so that didn't work. So we know it's not always. Let's see, right now we have it in sometimes. Let's see if it's sometimes. That means we have to do it again. When a unit fraction, and let's stick, stick with one half. I'll do one half again. One half is divided by a whole number, divided by a whole number, greater than zero. Well, we used one last time. This time you wanna use two? Let's use two. Let's divide by the whole number two. Equals, it says less than the whole number. So this should be less than half. So one half divided by a whole number two should give us the same as something less than a half. Let's do our picture again. So I have my whole, I only want to work with half of it. So I'm going to just take, show you the half I'm working with. So there's my half. And I want to take the half and partition it into two. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a different color and I'm going to partition it into two pieces. So I can draw a horizontal line or I could draw a vertical line. But I'm going to draw a horizontal line. There. Drew a horizontal line. I have taken my half and partitioned it into two pieces. But now I need to figure out what is my quotient. In order to get my quotient, I must remember with fractions, I actually have to take this half mark, this partition, and partition the entire whole. And now that I've partitioned the entire whole, I'm looking for how much is one of those pieces. So now I have one out of four. So what am I looking at? When I take the fraction one half and I partition it into two parts. That one half is the same as one fourth. So when I take that one half and partition it into two parts, the each of those parts is going to be one fourth. So let's look at our statement. Less than one half. Is one fourth less than Remember, 
it says then the quotient is less than the unit fraction. So I'm going to say less than the unit fraction is one half. So I'm going to put one half. So now let's draw a picture. I'm going to start off by drawing my half. And I want to divide the half by three. So I'm going to partition this half into three parts. So one, one, two, three. It's now partitioned into three parts. But one thing I know about fractions is that even though I only have this half, in order for me to correctly name the part, I have to do the entire whole. So I would have to partition the entire whole. So now out of this half, when I partitioned it into three parts, which is the same as dividing by three, one part is going to be called one out of one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. So one half divided by three is the same as one six. Now let's check to see if our statement is actually true. It says that the answer should be, the quotient should be less than one half. Is one six less than one half? If you say yes, you are correct. If you notice by looking at our picture, one half is shaded in a pinkish color, and then one six is actually circled, and that's not even that's one third of the six. So of the half. So that's one thing is that we can see that one six is only this part, whereas one half is the this part. So definitely one six is less than one half. So this statement is true. So far, it worked with the number, the whole number two, and it worked with the whole number three. So when I read the statement for the third statement, when a unit fraction less than one is divided by a whole number greater than one, then the quotient is less than the unit fraction. That is a true statement. And so far, it looked like it will always happen that way because the pieces, by partitioning into larger holes, the partition piece is getting smaller. So we're going to say that it is an always. And so far, we have two sections that we did correctly. Yay! And we only had one that we were a little bit off, but that's okay. We understand how it works now. Now that we have completed our review, we've taken a look at our statements from our review, always, sometimes, never. We did our learning activity where we were actually able to solve a story and notice some patterns through the answer. And it came back to our review, our always, sometimes, never chart, and was able to prove some of these facts that were listed on, some of these statements that were listed on our chart. We realized that we have some statements that will never happen, some statements that sometimes may happen, and then some statements that will always happen. And we can use these things to our advantage as we solve the problems that we have to do on our own. With that being said, you have three problems to complete on your own. And I know you can do it with the help of what we did today. So get ready to pause your TV and take out your camera so that way you can get a picture of the three problems that you'll be working on your own. Until next time, bye. Problem one, Mr. Jackson purchased three pounds of hamburger. He will make sliders, which each require one fourth pound of hamburger. How many sliders can Mr. Jackson make with the hamburger he purchased?
Problem two. Jay has one half of a large bag of potato chips that he takes to school to share with three of his friends. How much of the large bag of potato chips will one of his friends receive? Problem three. Demetria has three feet of ribbon. She is cutting the ribbon into one eighth foot sections to prepare for a craft project she wants to do. How many one eighth foot sections can Demetria make with the ribbon she has? 